Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of There's a Will. Thank you for watching. It is August. It is hot outside, and that's nice. And it's probably time for a holiday. With me in the studio is Nicholas Richardson. Is it time for a holiday, or you already had one? I already had one, but it's always time for another holiday. Okay. But I, don't, I doubt whether I'll get one, You won't get another. You, you weren't yeah. gone for long. I wasn't. No, it's only a week, unfortunately. You were gone for a week to, uh, let me guess, Bulgaria, right? It was Bulgaria. I, I quite, a, quite unexpected. I think we talked about yeah, it before. On the program, even. Uh, maybe in the autumn, I'll try and nip down to Spain. I think. Are you going to nip down there? Nip down there. I mean, nipping, of course, has become much more difficult following COVID because the airlines are in such a crisis yeah. that there are fewer flights, the fares have gone up. So nipping around is not as easy as it used to be. No, no. It's uh, unfortunately. Not. No. Um, I noticed that. There we are. But uh, if you're Japanese, easy. If you're Japanese, easy, yes. At any, at any rate, uh, we have on the horn from Bidgosh, beautiful downtown Bidgosh. The pleasure dome of uh, of Teutonic Poland. Uh, we have Anthony, Anthony, <laughs> Anthony McFarland, Gonzalez. Hey guys. I feel like I should be introducing him. In, in, it's a boxing match or something. Anthony <laughs> McFarland, <laughs> Gonzalez. You know? Yes. Yeah, totally. <laughs> this, this, uh, uh, don't give up your day job. Don't give up, what? Don't give up your day I job. I wasn't really trying. No, no, I can see. Thank God. I already gave up my day job. We're doing. <laughs> we're filming this at midnight. Yeah. It's the only time they'll let us in the studio. Exactly. Yeah. You can see they took. Uh, they took. Uh, this is all an optical illusion. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, existences apparently. Apparently. I heard uh, that on Larry King Live before he was dead. I heard that on Larry King Live before he was dead. <laughs> Tony, how have you been? What's been going on? Uh, nothing much. I'm just cracking, uh, reading intelligence and trying to figure out why the heck there's a toxic problem that we're having in that river. Yeah, there's, yeah, just stuff, not normal stuff. Yeah, yeah. This toxic, uh, the toxic problem in the river in the, in the Audra, or, or uh, the Oder, as the Germans would say. Germans would say. And we're going to let them say it. We're no, not going to stop them. No, no. Probably it's years can't. of tradition. You can't go, hey, Germans, stop with that odor. What is that odor? It should be an odra. You should. A nasty odor from the odor. Yep. Now there is a real odor from the odor. Well, a lot of dead fish. There's a lot of dead fish. And, uh, you know, in a news story, you're a, you're a bit of a news aficionado these days. Yes. For a few years now. You're a man who, who keeps up with the... With the, uh, well, I try to. There's just so much that goes on, it's hard to find the time to. And all over the world, and it's all on the Internet. It's all on the Internet. Yeah, yeah, I, so I try to yeah. read old-fashioned papers, albeit via <coughs> subscriptions on screens, but yes. Really? I mean, I, 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 I pay for yeah. some subscriptions, because then you're supporting journalism, and, and you're actually getting better quality of information. Hopefully, Gosh, I hopefully. wish people. I wish the New York Times supported journalism more. But anyway, well, this uh, is about that. But you make a good point that, that too many of these newspapers have become little more than sort of yeah, opinion the, sheets. Opinion sheets for whoever. And the, and the New supporting. York Times is yeah. particularly, I think, is particularly it's notable for its yeah, yeah. Well, that's it's, sad. its political well, bias. We used to know that in the UK because you had uh, you knew which papers leaned which way, but it wasn't, and then it was okay. Yeah. And you would just read all of them, or the ones you selected, and you'd have a, uh, you could get a sort of cross section. I mean, enough, but it, they were entertaining. Yeah, funny the Guardian, which of course is a bit of a lefty-leaning paper. The interesting thing about more the so than it used to be. Yeah, yeah. The, but the interesting thing, the articles are quite well written. I mean, it seems to be yes. written, written by adults for adults, albeit it has well, a political, a yeah. political slant, which some people may or may not find attractive. Yeah. But the actual quality of the writing is very good in the Guardian still. Yeah. I, I used to publish articles yeah. in, the, in The Guardian, yeah. I, um, I haven't tried for a while. But, uh, yeah, and I found them very, very good to deal with. And uh, I think one of my first articles in the newspapers was published in The Guardian. I think it was an arm wrestling tournament. But everybody these days seems to expect to get everything for free. So, of course, by definition, they're getting what people are prepared to pump out for free, which may or may not be accurate. Would we pay for? Uh, we pay for news. I get the Spectator. I get. The, I pay for the Spectator. I pay for the yeah. Uh, Times. Yeah, I and get I, Wall Street Journal. Yeah, I just don't have time to read any more, yeah. other than you know, nipping into the other article. 
Yeah. What's your favorite British paper? Well, I, you always used to be the Daily Telegraph, but that seems to... I mean, they still have some good writers, but generally I, the Times seems to be the most comprehensive and the most... The FT has, has changed. It used to be very good, uh, but the, because the European edition was very different from the British edition. But since it was sold by Pearson and it sort of got very... I don't know, it's just... I always find the, the European edition doesn't really have much in it, apart from the financial stuff. But it always used to have be quite a good general newspaper as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But I think it's less so now. Yeah, I just met the, the Financial Times correspondent about a month yeah. ago. I mean, it's difficult because these newspapers... The new one here. Yeah, yeah they've lost advertising revenue, yeah. so they can't afford to have journalists sitting around in places just to, on the off chance they might pick up a story like they used to. Well, you're supposed to go out and find stories. See, the idea was you would go out and find stories, and you had your beat, and so your beat is a whole country. You can find a lot of stories in a whole country. And if you can write, guess what? Yeah. There's always something interesting to write. But I don't think the papers have as many journalists sitting around. They don't have money. Do that's that. my point. They don't have. They yeah. can't afford to keep somebody. Well, that was that sitting was, around. That was stopping when I started. Yeah, exactly. It was, you know, already difficult. Yeah. And of course, what are, we, I we want, let's get yeah, Anthony. Of course, absolutely. Anthony, uh, you're a re you're one of those readers, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, one of those readers. That's what I call him. He likes to read. <laughs> <laughs> that is Nicholas. <laughs> You guys are readers. Yes. It's, uh, it's embarrassing, frankly. Well, you learn things if you read, you see. I know. What do you, what do you want to do that for? Well, what do you want to do that for? You said you've been studying. OK, let's go back to this Audra, because you brought it up, Anthony, mm. and you said you've been studying on it. And you, I think you read up against the same problem I found in trying to understand this thing. Doc, yeah, there's, there's nothing that clarifies what the heck is the cause for the loss of life on the fish. Uh, and it's not just a particular species, it's all of them. It is so generalized and it's really kind of worrisome because it's really not a, it's a toxin, they believe, but they can't identify what type of toxin, even if it is a toxin. And it's not even showing up in any of the blood results in the fish. So if there was a toxin or a pesticide toxin, it would show up, but it's not. So it's kind of the interesting part. It, ironically, it's in the Ukraine, of course, it's the river. But the issue is that we have no way to point the finger at anybody. And it's kind of... No, the, you're talking about the Odra River, right? Doc. Yeah, just on the border of Poland and Germany. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it doesn't make any sense. And nobody's yeah. pointing the fingers at... People don't the, know where, the, where it might be, that's the point. <laughs> Doc, yeah, the, uh, the location yeah. is... Yeah, it, The, the uh, point of origin is not even identifiable. Of the of this of whatever this is. So in a news story, I, this is what was interesting because he's talking about we were talking about the news, and you said you couldn't find anything after reading, and that's what the papers are reporting is supposedly for. Find out at least some facts. You have no. the who, what, when, where, and why. So on this one, we don't have the who, who did it. We don't no. have we don't have the what even because they haven't identified what the poison is. They said it some they, they, the Germans said there was a lot of mercury, then anyway, we'll come back. Then then the Poles say, well, there's not any there's only trace elements. And now the Germans say, well, it's mostly salt. What does that mean? Yeah. So and then so we don't have the what. We don't have the when, because there's still some they said didn't they didn't they say Anthony, some of this started back in March? They started to notice some fish, smaller fish. Uh, die-offs back in March? I yeah, they noticed that. a little bit of the river fish die-off uh, beginning of March and the February when the rivers are starting to clear up from the winter. Right. So there was a hint of this even some months ago, but the big problem uh, it has been probably percolating for some time, then it just hit its optimum level and started knocking out the fish. I'm guessing. I'm, I'm no scientist. No. no. Yeah, no. maybe. I'm not a scientist, you know that. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. But the one thing that they have to look at is what facilities are near the river, and even just a, not only government facilities, but private industrial facilities and even farms that are using the river that have runoffs from chemicals that they constantly use. That's one of the problems that they've had in Germany. They've identified it, and that's why a lot of the local farmers are switching from using chemicals to natural ways, and, but that's just one of the tip of the icebergs. So it's, there's probably a heck of a lot more complex issue here than we're actually just nipping at.
Well, fertilizers have been known to be poisonous too. Doc, but it, it would have shown up in in the fish's blood when they yeah. would have. So we've got an. Have they tested for COVID? <laughs> no. <laughs> they haven't. But, but uh, I, I didn't see that. They, I think maybe we should call Anthony Fauci and get him in on the job. Yeah, get his opinion on you know. Yeah. Get, see if we can find out. Maybe these fish all got COVID. Maybe. Yeah, because they're all uh, hanging out together, aren't they? They hang out in schools. They do. Yeah. I don't want to see where that goes. I wonder if they have drag queen uh, <laughs> exhibitions in those schools. <laughs> Let's fish. About fish are probably not that. Stupid. They don't have time for that. They're too busy uh, nibbling. Exactly. Is that what fish do? They nibble, don't well, they? I think so. Yeah. Do we have fish in the Audra or the Odor? Well, we used to. The... <laughs> no, we used to. <laughs> when we used to have fish in there, it's not funny. I, know that. I don't it's know why we're funny. laughing. It's your fault. Of course, yes. <laughs> you always made me laugh. Yeah. Stop it. Okay. Uh, uh, the, uh, do they have fish in the river who eat other fish? Yes. They're the predator fish. Uh, they have uh, catfish, are usually predator fish there. Catfish, maybe, well, do, does a carp eat? They just eat people, don't they? Carp. <laughs> they get big. <laughs> they get massive. But carp they do can get own. huge, right? They really do eat their own. No, it's uh, it's not only in the Odra River, but there are other fish species that do the same thing all the time. Northern pike, bass, uh, salmon sometimes eat their own if they're, if they're small enough. It's protein and food. They yeah. need it. And it's local. Yeah, I, under, I understand. Uh, sam sometimes the bears have to be quick before the salmon eat each other, <laughs> just out of fear. You know, yeah. it's crazy. I read that in a in a Field and Stream article. You know, it's a magazine, Field and Stream. Sounds like it. Yeah, it's about it's a the nice uh, magazine too. Very nice. You you know this magazine? Oh yes, I do. Yeah. Fly fishing is one of my. Yeah. It's a good calming. It's a book. good one. Yeah. Yeah, Nick doesn't know, but he would love it. It would just write down. They have they have the sort of country gear that you would like go well with your Range Rover. Yes. You know, your wellies. Indeed. Well, your Wellington boots. Well, s sensible clothing. Yeah, those are very, those yeah. are very useful. Yeah, I, I wear the old duck boots in the winter. But never mind. So, uh, if you were to go about, <laughs> they don't quack. No, the uh, if. You were to go about investigating this, gentlemen. What would you do to find out? I mean, I think there's a very say you're an investigative reporter. I came up with a whole movie scenario about this, actually, <laughs> just thinking about it. Uh, about a guy who was going to go every year he goes. See, he's a retired uh, 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 guy who used to work in the uh, security of these big industrial plants, right? So, and he still consults a little bit. But that's what he used to do. But he's going with his family every year to the Odor River, or to a river, and, to, uh, and they go on a fishing trip. And he can't wait all year. It's a big fishing trip. Now his son's of age. He's going to teach him all about fields and streams and uh, uh, Wellington boots and all those things and casting and, you know, hooking a, hooking a angling. All that, you yep. know what I'm talking about. And uh, they get there, and there's this big spill, and it ruins his vacation. And that starts him to thinking. <laughs> and then it becomes a Father Brown <laughs> type. <laughs> you know, that's Chesterton, right? Chest indeed. Isn't that the famous one? The Chesterton. famous one, Chesterton. Yeah. The Father Brown Mysteries, where he goes and finds the who, uh, who poisoned Miss Pennyfathing in the, in the sitting room. Yeah. Okay, but back, Anthony. What what would you do, for example, if you were going to look at this and try and find out? I don't understand. It seems to me there's just certain very obvious things you would do. I don't understand why that's being hard uh, hard for the Germans or the Pol Polish authorities to do. And honestly, I think they just want to blame each other. But what I would do is I would obviously yeah. test the water. I would test the water downstream and upstream, find the cleanest source. Uh, to have a baseline and then continue to test the water as I go down the stream to see where the actual source starts. Or to where see where it's strongest, right? Exactly. You could also at the same time go and test every manufacturing plant, right? It would do, yeah, that's right along the river. That's right you know? along the river, every single one of them, because this is a lot of material. 
Uh, it doesn't sound like it's the sort of thing you could have done even in several dump truck, uh, uh, sorry, no, this, cement this mixer years. type things. This, this was leading to me. This seems like something that's been years. I mean, hell, for instance, look at the Ohio River. I'm going to use one of the rivers in the you United States. Do that. That's a good, good example. Yeah. It was so chemically embedded with crud, it lit itself on fire. <laughs> That was one of the yeah. weird things that the Ohio River started. Lake on fire. Erie too used to used to go on fire. Yes, and yeah. uh, the the Ohio sort of goes into Lake Erie. Does it? Or yes, it does. It goes right into Lake Erie. Yeah, and one of the biggest <clears throat> reasons why because a lot of the industrial plants were pushing a lot of the chemicals there and they were flushing it out all the time and the river was so dirty there was no fish, nothing. It was so polluted. Was a, they called the Lake Erie a dead lake, didn't they, in the old days, in the seventies yeah, I think, and before. It, but it's still recovering. Still yeah, recovering. Fully recovered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still recovering. So, uh, what you're suggesting then, I don't know what you think about this, Nick, is uh, try and put your thinking cap on here. The uh, I got a cap. I give one after the break. Thank you. If you left your thinking cap at home, the um, it seems to me that there must be regular testing as you go along, but. Um, Perhaps it reached an optimum level. It was a buildup over time, which is what Tony suggests. Maybe it's a buildup over time, which has been exacerbated by drought conditions. So all of a sudden, the now the voice of reason. I knew you'd so come all up of a it. sudden, no, the actual you're... concentration of whatever it is is is, is so okay. much greater. Now you see a little bit of thinking. I think we're getting we're getting us I mean, uh, closer to a. Solution. I don't know what the status of the Odra River is uh, in drought terms or what its levels are, but that would be well, one lower. possibility. It's low. It's, uh, it's actually low all across Europe. Yeah. All rivers have severely have uh, lowered their levels. Uh, there's one, the main river in Italy, for instance, is com almost completely dry. One of the the biggest river in Italy is almost completely dry. So uh, it wouldn't what surprise. What river is that? Things. The biggest river? The Po, the Elbra, or the Po? Po. I think it's the Po because that's where all the industrial. In yeah, the I think you're right. I, I think, think it's it the Po. The Po. Not sure what the state of the Tiber is. Obviously, not. Uh, it's not the Tiber. No, not the Tiber. The Tiber's green. Yeah. But Looks like somebody threw food coloring in it's it. It's very worrying, generally, as a. You know, the Rhine is very low. Yeah, but they have. Uh, I, that's, well, this ties in. I think. I'm glad you said it because it ties in <laughs> very well with the topic I wanted to talk about as well, related to the environment, which is the drought conditions. Um, it doesn't seem that we have drought conditions in Poland because it seems to have rained a lot this year. Uh, year. But it I does. think overall there is drought, right? It depends when it rains. Really, you need rain in the autumn and the winter. Yeah. We, we didn't have rain in the winter? We didn't have as no, much. No, not as much as we should have. That's not when you really snow. need it, autumn and winter, then you're okay. Having a bit of rain in the middle of the summer is a bit late. I'm very welcome, but late. A and not late. likely to have a, a major impact unless it rains for weeks on end. It evaporates as well yeah. quickly. That's and it's, you know, the, the, the ground is very dry by that stage. So. Yeah, and the ground is very and dry. In those out. conditions, you get a lot of runoff, of course. Yeah, in the countryside, the ground's very. I was just in the. I was at the agricultural fair, something that you missed. Yes. I begged you to go. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Shahanovitz yeah. is the place where they have the agricultural museum and Skansen. Have you been there, Tony? No, I haven't been there, but I've been to agricultural fairs in Minnesota and Wisconsin, so I can only imagine. I bet. I bet those are even are huger. But this is con uh, but they're massive. This is only like uh, 20,000 people uh, is their usual take, and it's crowded. This is a tiny town, and there's no place to park, and there's like 30 minutes trying to get into the bloody place. And then, uh, that's all right, and then you walk around and you go, gosh, it's hot. And then you have uh, some uh, nice prepared food. Well, you know, in Poland, as soon as you say fresh country food, everybody shows up, right? Yeah, exactly. And there's plenty of good stuff to eat. Yeah, so people like it. It was fun, and there were lot, you know, lots of families, lots of and was the lots uh, of strippers. Was the drought? I didn't realize strippers were so much into agriculture. And was the drought a right topic of with conversation? The what was the drought a topic at your agricultural fair? Uh, well, there weren't any lectures or anything. It was just uh, they did recreations of uh, uh, they did the square dancing. You know, you thought that was something from the Appalachian Mountains, but where do you think it came from? It came from Europe, right? Uh, so they did the polka dancing, square dancing, 
uh, looks very, the po I mean, well, what they were doing looks very similar to square dancing that, that I remember as a kid messing around. You ever do square dancing there, Tony? Um, yep, and polka. Yeah, yeah, okay, so exactly. This, they were doing that. Some, uh, some people all dressed up in the Mazovska, Mazovian costume, or maybe it was the Podlasian. I don't know if I'm saying this right or not. Podlasian? Uh, maybe Podlasian. Right. Uh, we need a uh, professor here. He's not here. I'm lost. Yeah, you're lost. We're lost. We're we're lost. Weird. We have no sounding board. No. For our... You know, anyway, so it was great. It was a lot of fun. And just walk around. You know, it was fun. And they have all the Skansen things where they show how they did things in the 19th, 18th, 17th century, how they were making things. They had a, a, a threshing machine, an old, a old one collection of tractors from beginning of tractordom showing Soviet tractors and American tractors and I didn't see any British tractors. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. Well, well. I don't know why. Uh, German tractors. There were a lot. And, uh, you know, they should just want to get in, you know, start it up and go plow the North 40, doesn't it? Can you see that? It does. Yeah. It really does. And then they had a fun fair. So it was, you know, this is right out in the middle of the country. So this is one of the biggest events. I mean, you're even far from Bialystok. Goodness me. Oh, mackerel. I know. It really is out there. You know? Bialystok's a, the big town. <laughs> <laughs> you know, compared for these people. It's a massive city. I'm not going in there. I hear what they get up to in the big city. So anyway, uh, yeah, so it was fun. I would highly recommend it. It was called the the the, the theme was the bread festival. Bread festival. Very important. Look up bread festival, people, if if you want to know. And, uh, and of course, there are all kinds of bread. And the curious thing they have here, because this is an educational program too, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Yes. It's not just serious news all the time. Hard news by hard men, and and ladies when we can find them. Uh, it's. Uh, they also have this kvass. Do you know what that is? Kvass. Do you know what that is, Tony? No, sir, I do not. Okay. Uh, kvass. I like how he says, no, sir. Okay, I want you to get out there and run and measure that cornfield. <laughs> uh, tell me how to get right back here. You're going to give you 15 minutes. Uh, the, I don't know what the cornfield thing was. Uh, kvass is this thing, uh, drink made from bread, which is very popular. Oh, people walking around with bottles of it, just chugging it down. I go, oh my God, I don't think I could do that. I'll take some water, yeah. if I may, or perhaps a refreshing lemonade or a pivo, a beer. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So it was fun. There were, and, you know, on something like that, you just chill. The weather was beautiful. And so you, environmental disaster is far from your thoughts at that point. But we've been filming on the Audra a lot. We filmed in Apollo which I recommend is a, Apollo is the southern Bidgosht, in some oh. sense, Tony. I'll have to go down there and visit it. Yeah, it's nice. It's got the same kind of German architecture. They've really done a lot of renovation there. The, the river, the Audra is there, it's a big river coming through. A lot of old German, you know, this is right at the edge of where Germany uh, uh, stopped in Silesia. Uh, they kept this after the, the First World War. It, would, it didn't go to Poland. Remember, Poland was moved over. Yeah. You know that. But just to tell people, Poland was way over east of where it is now. They moved it west after the war. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. Seems funny, I doesn't Poland, it? I thought just the Hova was as farthest that the Germans expanded into Poland. Where? Just the Hova in the Silesia region. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's close. Apollo is, uh, oh, it's less than 100 miles, well, 75 miles, maybe? Oh, that's, that's really close. Close, yeah, south, uh, just southwest. Uh, of, yeah. Anyway, did you, did you hear the thing? There, we got to stop here and we got to have a break. Just tell Tony before, I was reading, uh, that, uh, that, uh, they're going to move Minnesota over. Uh, oh, to where? They're finally. going to shift it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some some sleight of hand. The, the, you never know what the government's going to do next. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll be back with the second half. We're going to talk about uh, uh, we're going to talk about what's been going on with the war mm. because that is also a reason we're here. 
we continue to bring you more longer discussions on a regular basis than anyone else in English in Central Europe. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Welcome back. I'm just doodling this, nothing important. And uh, I, I was talking to Nicholas and to Tony about dating applications during the break. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoyed the messages. I don't know if there are any about dating, but. Probably not. Uh, I learned a lot. Yeah. Uh, during that break. Yeah. About begging the question. Exactly. From Nicholas and uh, what it really means. And also from Tony about how to meet a nice uh, champion. Cyclist. Lady cyclist. Yeah, fantastic. Which uh, so you and your girlfriend? This is let's just tell the folks. Oh, my wife. Your wife. Yeah. Sorry, I said. No, you're wife. good. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, your wife. We're both in the time trials this last weekend. Yeah. And uh, you placed in 20. the top yeah. 25, and she was number four in the ladies, right? Yep. Yeah. Number four. It's amazing. It's very good. And did you know she was a great cyclist from your... Uh... No, she didn't even know herself. I've been cycling since I was a young kid. I mean, I bought my first bike for $700. <laughs> yeah. That was a lot of money for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. They competed for multiple continental teams in the United States and came here after my military career. And she didn't know she was a good cyclist until she started using my bikes and found and fell in love even more with cycling because she used to cycle all over Europe on, on her bike. And oh, she, she was already doing going all over Europe and things like that. Yeah, just not taking it competitively. That's so. amazing. Yeah. Oh, she's a monster at it. But yeah, she was the Polish championships this weekend and she just blew it out of the water. Yeah. The, Nicholas's uh, girlfriend. It's very good on the uh, on the exercise bike cycle. While she's watching TV and eating a leg of chicken, <laughs> <laughs> usually fried. But uh, she's a nice lady. I like her. She's mm -hmm. smart. That's what matters. Yeah, yeah. Who cares? And you know, she's going places, but just not on her bike. Yes. She's been, been going a lot. She's been a lot of places. She's a very esteemed academic lady. Yeah. 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 Well, that's all we got for that. What's what's up in the in the uh, in the war? It seems like we have we have Kherson and we have the Donbass or Donbass. Is it the Donbass or Donbass? Is it Ukraine or the Ukraine? I mean, come on, it's hard to keep up, isn't it? It is hard to keep up. Yeah, that's begging a question. Let's beg the question. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, uh, what was the other one? Kremlin. Crimea, mm -hmm. the airfield attack, and Kharkiv, yeah. Those are like the four main ones, aren't they? Crimea, Kharkiv, Kherson, and Donbass. Uh, Donbass, still a stalemate, isn't it, Tony? Still. There isn't much progress there, and it's because of the rivers crossing in there. Hard to cross the rivers over there, and in yeah. force, and and then not get cut off on the other side, right? Thanks. Yeah. So what, what do you think? Uh, Kharkiv, the Russians have been making a push up there. Why have they been doing this? I haven't really put my finger on it. I don't know why they've been really pushing for Kharkiv. Is it just a diversion? Is it just say, hey, we're still here? It and you're close to Russia just to destabilize the situation a bit? What do you think? Most likely just to tell the people in Russia that they're still there fighting and winning and gaining ground. And then that's pretty much it. Okay. That they're still there. Yeah. So they, they're just saying, well, it's a stalemate over here, but we're making a push up here. It's creating news, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And what about, uh, what about Crimea? Yeah. And I think the main uh, areas are Harrison and Crimea, aren't they? For what's going to happen. What do you have to say about that, Nick? Yeah, because they were very. Um I think Ukrainians were, did very well a few days ago when they actually were able to destroy some aircraft, some Russian aircraft at an airbase on Crimea. Yeah. So that's, that's a great morale booster for the Ukrainian side and probably a bit of a shock for the Russians. 
uh, which again goes to the point which the president uh, uh, Zelensky has been making for a long time. If we, the Ukrainians, were given the weapons we've asked for, we would be able to finish this war pretty efficiently and pretty quickly. So will you please stop sitting on your hands and do something about it? Um, I think his message, he probably is a bit more polite than I am. And he's absolutely right. I mean, you know, hist history teaches us if you're fighting the war for survival and democracy, it's much better to fight it in somebody else's country. And in this case, we should fight it in Ukraine so that we don't have to fight it anywhere else because that's where it's already started. I mean, that may sound very cynical, but the point is, well, no, yes, I'm, it is. Yeah, we've all kind of agreed to it. I yeah, mean, exactly. everybody's agreed it's a proxy So we should war actually now give them the time. weapons they need to actually finish it off. And by finishing it off, I think obviously that means removing Russia, Russian forces from most of the territory they, 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 they've, they have occupied. Um, which I, I think should include the, the Crimea. The idea there, well, the Russians sort of get full marks because they invaded the Crimea on the quiet in 2014, therefore they can keep it. it and, and they can keep the bits of Donbass which they invaded in 2014 or whatever. It, it's complete nonsense. They have to be pushed all the way out of... Why should they keep it? Well, I, I'm not saying I sh they shouldn't no. keep it. Should they have let Hitler keep well, at this the end of the war? Should they said, oh, but, but the, now that the war is over, uh, you can keep what you took at no, the, the beginning. Big, the big, I think the big fear for Ukraine is that as the winter comes and we have all these other crises, inflation and fuel shortages, that Western resolve might crack. And then there'll be pressures from the usual suspects, the Germans and the French, telling the Ukrainians, well, you know, it's all getting a bit inconvenient supporting you now, so will you please make peace with the Russians? And they'll no doubt be telling the Russians, oh, by the way, it's all right, we've persuaded the Ukrainians to make peace with you, whatever the cost. Um, I, maybe I'm being a bit cynical again, but I mean, that's, I think that is the fear that Zelensky has, that people have sort of war fatigue. No, no, Nick, you're, you're spot on. Yeah. Not, you are not saying something that we haven't thought about, and it's actually something that is really true, because yeah. that's what we think is going to happen. Winter's coming, and it's going to be extremely hard here with a lot of people that don't know how to handle the inflation with the heat, especially with the gas, because a lot of the European gas has come from Russia, and now they have to figure out ways to figure it out. And then that's also going to be an issue with getting the armament and continued support for the Ukraine. So, no, you're spot on. What about the, the, uh, the fuel problem? Because some people are saying, oh, the, uh, the Germans are going to want to give up because they don't have fuel. But there's another opinion on that, that uh, that'll just, if they try to starve out the Germans, the Germans will just become more resolute. Maybe. Think? I mean, in terms of we fuel... No, yet, yeah, but really? Yeah. I mean, Are they going to start crying and go, OK, you win, I, don't know, I think gas, I think oil, I don't think anybody is um, finding that oil, in fact, oil in the last couple of days, it's it, gone down. It's gone down because, of course, the Chinese are not using quite as much as everybody expected because they have their own problems. Yeah. So I don't think anybody's worried. What are the so, Chinese problems? Well, they have this sort of these mad lockdowns. They, 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 they the have. Mad lockdowns, but they also have, they're on the edge of real economic problems. Well, of course they are, because the whole, the whole economic system is based on inflated property prices. Yep, Let, there you go. Uh, and, and, it's, and dare I say it, I dare say it, corruption, ultimately. There you, you go. Know, crony loans to property companies, which are huge, and they, the whole thing's about to collapse at some and point. And they're not finishing a lot of their projects that people have invested in. Oh. Uh, it's a build as you go, invest as you as they build program. The whole the whole world. People should it? read about that. It's fascinating. And of course, then you have the uh, president Xi. Of course, is just going mad and, and really trying to aggravate the rest of the world with this Chinese bullying, trying to make the South China Sea a Chinese lake. Well, I've been saying for a long time the Chinese have enough internal problems. Uh, I've been saying this, you know, thinking about it for years, that uh, they have enough inter eternal, internal and eternal problems, they're always the same problems in some sense, these class problems in China, um, and this rigidity that keeps them, hierarchy, rigid, rigid hierarchy, that keeps them from being able to adapt, and so they fall hard when they fall. And if you look at any of the Chinese history, when dynasties change, the whole thing goes to heck in a handbasket there. <laughs> exactly. Young fellow, exactly. No, no, I mean, that's, um, say, China, the a mili Chinese militancy is, is another problem for the world. Um, and, of course, we can't be complacent in the West generally because we have strange things happening in our own internal politics, which are strange. Um, very unsettling. This, this sort of lack of confidence, this lack of, of self-belief all of a sudden, this pandering to the worst kind of minorities, for who are, which is bizarre, really, really, really strange, and this constant undermining of the academic rigor on which the uh, 
values well, think, that the West was supported. Thinking like reading is bad. Well, exactly. Don't come around here and with I, your I, logic. I can't believe what an expert tells me because I've read something from a complete stranger on Facebook, which must be cor therefore correct. I mean, this is this is the most frightening thing we face. Yeah, oh, this is a totally but unauthorized but, source. But, but I understand that Facebook has <laughs> now become be Facebook has become too intellectually for most people. So they go on things like whatever it is, TikTok or things like that. I mean, it gets even worse. No, on Facebook, all I see, I don't know, Tony. Tony, all I see on Facebook is is the most basic, mundane things. I had a meal. Here it is. I had a baby. Here it is. I got married. Here it is. Are, are people kidding or what? Here's a picture of my cat. Yeah. I mean, well, cats are actually interesting. Well, you've got a cat, but yeah. I'm, I'm and very dogs suspicious too. of cats. I like cats and dogs. But they, they deserve our attention and time because they suffer us. No, but uh, you're right. I mean, Facebook has become it's a, it's a mundane platform. It doesn't, the, the news media and everybody else are tailoring to getting information on there for what's true on Facebook. Who knows? And like what Nick said, it's ridiculous that they're not taking an expert's opinion and reading up on it to actually understand the background of that. Pardon me, the jet. Yeah, well, there you go with your schooling again. Yeah. I your school talk. Right next to the, uh, Is the, that? the uh, repair facility for F-16s and 29s. Yeah, I, I was going to say that did not, that sounded like a military craft, aircraft. It did not sound like a large jumbo jet. No, 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 no it's definitely a fighter it's jet. It's a totally different sound. When I was a kid, they used to land they, they, in Virginia Beach. There's a base called Oceana. You may have heard of it, Air Force. And they would come and land, take off and land right over the Virginia Beach Boulevard. I mean, you, you could wave to the pilots, and they would wave back. <laughs> That's cool. It's, but they seem like they're going so slow, you know, because relative to their normal speed, they're going, you know, a couple hundred miles an hour, but they just seem yeah, to be suspended in air because they're so close to you. Back and they're funneling their, uh, what is it called, their uh, aliards to almost stall speed and then come in. Yeah, that's also the case, yeah, because they're really, yeah, when they're landing, they're coming in really, almost you could reach out and touch them. It's, well, Amazing. Me. What have you got next to you up there? The, that's the, the repair facility, the maintenance facility here. The maintenance facility for the, for the plants. I didn't know that was in Bidgosh, or near Bidgosh. Yeah, they, yeah. they have the big air show here every summer. Oh, I'll tell you a place you need to go is Gniev. Uh, that's a place. Get on your bike and cycle over there. Since you're, 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 <laughs> you're a fast cycler. You're going to go there, go to Bidgosh, and by golly, go to Grunjons, and sorry, Bidgosh to Grunjons, and then go up there, and then and then go to Gniev. Wow, what a great trip! That's your weekend for you. No thought, yeah, hell yeah. You have an amazing time. It's in your backyard. Great bicycling area as well. A lot of back roads. You do sneaky stuff. You know, wind about. <laughs> I'm already in enough trouble on the bike as it is when I, I don't crash. <laughs> <laughs> nicely yeah you gotta be uh, some of the roads you gotta be careful and stay off bad drivers yeah yeah well people that, you can't trust people in a big hunk of metal when you're on a little bike you can't no. yeah i mean it's unfair to them and to yourself isn't it yeah i want you know to come back to to the ukraine to ukraine the ukraine war um to harrison because i think uh, we we talked a little bit about it last week a little bit less the week before but gradually this is becoming a very interesting thing and i wrote to i don't know if i wrote to you but i wrote to tony correct me if i'm wrong to uh, uh is this dien bien fu the second if are they going to cut off the russians in this town i really hope they do sorry i really hope they do you know it's starting to look like it's possible the command it's never good when your commanders move to the other side of the river which no, is what the not. Russian commanders have done. They put the yeah. river between the Dnieper, between themselves and their troops and the officials and everybody else they brought into Kherson. I think Kherson's a sitting duck myself. For the Russians, yes. For the, I mean, I think the, some, something very interesting is going to happen there. And if it does, it will... I hope they're planning something, but uh, I'm sure they're planning something, but I hope it's successful. No, they need the weapons and the support. 
And the, the Russians have developed tactics, right, the, of course, always. The Russians have developed tactics to deal with the HIMARS. Tony, were you reading about that? Yeah, the, the, the tactics are not going to be very effective uh, because they are trying to use the infrastructure that's already there, the cell phone infrastructure and some of the signals infrastructure to target the HIMARS, but they're not going to because the HIMARS trucks are a little bit too maneuverable and they can't keep up. So that's just propaganda that the Russians are spilling out to people. That's what I was thinking. I didn't see how it's possible for no, them to suddenly come up with a magic formula. But also, there's a lot of magic talk, which makes me think it's not going so well for Mr. to put in. No. Uh, and uh, I call him put in because he was. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Isn't that funny how sometimes the name is just perfect? Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah, it, it, if, you, if you say it in Spanish, uh, it's uh, a different word. <laughs> is it? No, and in French. Yeah, yeah, it's not no. a good word. Yeah. No, definitely not. It's um, a not, but, naughty word, naughty word. Oh, yeah. very nice. But if you get to the Kremnia, it was, I wonder how the Kremnia was attacked, and I'm pretty sure that they used the HIMARS uh, long-range missiles because HIMARS have a 500-600 mile range, effectively. Uh, and that's what I think would be one of the best ways to can put the HIMARS to use. Even though the Ukrainians are not claiming the attack. Well, they're not. Why are they not claiming the attack? That's interesting, too. It's not. I would be claiming that attack. I, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. Tactically, it doesn't make sense not to claim it. Politically, it makes sense not to claim it. Okay, why do they still give them the bridge? Because they still have the bridge from the mainland to the Crimea. Uh, is it the Crimea or Crimea? I know. I, I want to get it right. I don't know what it is. I don't want right. anybody else writing to me on Facebook about my art, use of articles well, and how they're incorrect. It's English, so we can... I think it's we, begging the question. If we want to use articles and use our language, then we can use articles, can't we? I agree. If you think about it, I don't get upset because the Poles or the French or whatever say London and they use a different word. And so they I say the London? No, no, but they don't. They say London or Londres. Londres. But, yeah. I do, but uh, other Nadine. nations seem to get very upset the way if we say Peking and not Beijing, for example. I think we should say Peking now with renewed enthusiasm. You know what I think we should say? Bombay. Bombay, of course. Which is what most Indians say, of course. It's Mumbai with some sort I've of... I've tried this, yeah. It, it was like, a, was oh, a, we, we don't like Mumbai. <laughs> was like, yeah, exactly, of course We don't, don't like that. <laughs> or Madras. Yeah. What, what is it now? I don't know. Chennai or something. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Because you nice. don't recognize these names. I like a Madras plaid as much, ne exactly. much as the next man. We, but it goes down to this not standing up for us. Well, look, in your language it's this, in our language it's that, so everybody can be happy. Okay. This idea that you have to dictate what, how somebody describes your city in a different language seems to be very bizarre. I know. I know. And, and sort of sensitivity. Uh, I can't tell you how many people wrote, you know, or said to me, uh, make sure that you say the Ukraine. Or don't say the Ukraine. Oh, sorry, don't, uh, make sure you don't say the Ukraine. I said, well, what about Crimea and the others? Donbass. Now everybody's, as soon as they can, people say the Donbass, the Crimea, as quick as they can. The French Riviera, the Costa del Sol. Yeah, they shouldn't say that. I'm going to say French Riviera with no the from now on. Yes. What if you don't have articles in your language? Well, then you don't have to worry about this. Yeah, and so the Ukrainians don't, so it's not really their problem. Well, exactly. I, I, I know. So we got slightly distracted from the very serious point, but yes. Why is the bridge still there? Well, I suppose the, uh, maybe the Ukrainian uh, forces don't have the requisite ability to destroy it. Or do they want to destroy it because the infrastructure would be there after they take back the Crimea? Yeah, maybe they want maybe yeah. they want it to be available so that the Russians can flee Crimea. That's why they're not uh, give them a, give them a way out. Yeah, and well, there's that bridge, the Azov Sea bridge, and there's also the bridge connecting the Crimea to the, you know, Russia, where that girl escaped across. She yeah, went yeah. to Crimea. Remember the lady who yeah, was yeah, on no, here? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Kamira. Uh, Kare Karima? Karima. Karima, uh, who was telling her story about escaping over that bridge and yeah. through Crimea and through Russia and then coming out in Latvia. Crazy story, right? I wouldn't want to try that. No. Would you? Like no, there are lots of things that people do that I'd rather not try. 
I mean, I, it's almost scary just to hear about it, it is. isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, what is the prognosis for what's going to happen in the next three, four months? I mean, we don't really know, but I mean, because somebody could take Putin out and then it's all over, right? Well, in we don't, sense. but we don't Unless know. Gets, if, there's somebody worse. That can yeah, well, exactly. We don't know if Putin goes. If the next person might be even worse. Yeah. You know, there's we, no tend, we tend, inside, we tend to assume that all these the leaders think rationally, think the way we do, but they don't. They have a completely different motivation. They don't have to care what anybody else thinks. Yes. She does not have to care what anybody else thinks. Putin yes. doesn't have to care what anybody else thinks. Yes, and that and changes is, your and that whole changes perspective. That, exactly. It changes so what's, everything. What's rational to us is not rational to them. Of course not. And why would it be? When you've got that much power, I mean, they've got a billion people going, uh, when they say, stay at home, they do. I mean, heck, it's hard even to get your kids to stay at home when you tell them to, right? What exactly? I wonder if Z has trouble <laughs> with his, getting his kids to stay at home. At any rate, um, the world at war. When you, there's a lot of material being put out uh, about this war, and uh, there are a lot of uh, things on YouTube about war, and uh, many of them done by individuals, some of them done from televisions, esteemed televisions like uh, the PBS series or the BBC series, or other countries uh, making good ones. The French make good stuff. But uh, what, uh, uh, what is interesting to me is looking at the world of war. Uh, which was made in 1973, and this is the high, shows the high standards of journalism. They used Lawrence Olivier. Uh, I mean, that the, the narration the by Lawrence Olivier over. was uh, was fantastic. That's some kid going, you know, and then the Germans did this. No. And you're going, oh my God, it was Lawrence Olivier. Let's give you another voice, could we? Turn the volume down. Exactly. Uh, no, there are a lot like of people I won't listen marvelous to. Marvelous series, yeah. really, a high yeah. point. But this is incredible, and. Uh, 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 and with his dramatic telling, and it's written by Neil Atchison, really fine journalist, uh, um, who who wrote a lot about Poland actually. Yeah, uh, used to write in the Independent magazine uh, about Poland. Uh, very interesting writer, and he he must have been a young man at that point when he when he did this. Must have been a big opportunity, right? Oh, he's probably a first from Cambridge or Oxford or something like that. Probably. Yeah. Have you ever seen The World at War, Anthony? No, I haven't. The World at War. I'll send you a link for that. I'll send you a link for that. But at any rate, I'll leave everybody with this because we've got to go. But uh, thank you for being on the show, Tony, once again. You've been a regular for some time now, and you add uh, a great deal to our discussions, and we're always happy to have you here. And Nick for appearing again. My pleasure. We've done this so many times together, but uh, it's always good to see you. Always fun. Uh, so thanks. Well, always a pleasure. Thanks for being here. Um, just to, if you watch the world at war, it is uncanny how s s it's like Putin watched this documentary or read the book or whatever. I, I said he used Mein Kampf as his sort of playbook. But uh, it really looks like he looked at the series and said, oh, that's, I could just say that uh, the people in the Sudetenland are Germans. <laughs> and then we just move in. And the Austrians are Germans, so we just move in. Ah, what a great idea. Watch the World at War, 1973, narrated, written by Neil Atchison, written by Sir Lawrence, uh, 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 voiced, uh, voiceover by Sir Lawrence Olivier and uh, uh, Lord Olivier at the end. Yeah, Lord Olivia. Great one. Okay. Thanks for watching. You're looking well. Why don't you stay that way?